The render you're looking at right now is not the only result you're going to learn how to make in this tutorial because with the technique I'm going to show you, you are going to be able to make all sorts of results that all use the same principle. And uh, for the mathematically inclined of you, what we're actually doing here is we are going to make an SDF, a sign distance function for any piece of text, any curve, um, pretty much anything at all. So you can see here I made a different result with a glowing thing. I can swap it out with like, you know, a different word. And it works uh, just like that. So let's talk about the math and the nodes of how this operates. This is going to be a geometry nodes tutorial. So go to geometry nodes. For the cube, replace it with a geo nodes group and just delete the geometry. Okay. What we need is two things. We need a plane, a, a big grid that basically we're going to have our material on. This is basically the screen we're looking at. And second of all, we're going to need the curve or the piece of text. So let's make both of those things. Starting off with the grid, boom, we have a grid. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Nice. Second thing we need is the piece of text, the thing that we are now comparing to to make the uh, SDF. Uh, for that, if you're familiar with geometry nodes at all, string to curves is the way to do this. So let's just use the letter A, for example, and I'm just going to pick a font that kind of serves us a bit better. Mm, default font's fine. Uh, with this letter or any piece of text, I'm going to center it so that if we were to combine these, and we're not going to, but if you are to combine them, it's centered on the grid, okay? Now, what we care about, again, what we want to see is this grid, but with information on top of it. So what information? Uh, we need to know how close we are to the piece of text. This is what makes it a sign distance function. This is what gives us the result. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a geometry proximity node. We care about how close we are to the strings to curves. Uh, those of you that are observant are going to notice a couple things. First of all, we need this to be set to points. We need this to no longer be an instance because when you output strings to curves, you can see it outputs a single instance, realizes instances, turns it into a curve object. And the last thing, once we output it, is you're going to see we get this little error sign. Basically, uh, it's because we're trying to compare it to a curve. As you're going to see, input geometry has unsupported type curve. So we need to turn it into a mesh. Boom. So what do we have so far? We have a grid. This is what's being piped out. Super simple. But we're also pumping out an attribute. That attribute is going to give us the proximity to a basically curvified, meshified version of a piece of text. Okay. So in this output attribute, which is exactly this distance, let's just call it D-I-S-T for distance, not for dis track or anything like that. And this is the information we're going to use for our material. In fact, since we're going to make a material for this, I'm going to apply it to the grid. Okay. So over in the shader editor, again, we have this material right here. I'm going to rename it to SDF. Uh, so you can see this is the SDF material. If we go into rendered mode and do something to this, you can see it changes. Uh, what we want to do is now send or send or pipe this information into the shader editor. I know we're going through a lot of different nodes and windows, but you know, get used to it. We're going to use the dist distance function and you can see it's doing something. Um, but the question is, what, what, what is it doing and why does it not look like the letter A? Um, those of you who have paid a lot, a lot of attention are going to know uh, that this, the resolution of our attribute in some sense, is tied to the amount of geometry we have in our grid. In other words, if I increase this, you could see it's kind of like we're getting more resolution, more pixelization, less pixelization in the thing. Because what we're doing is we're comparing each point in this grid uh, to the nearest, using geometry proximity, the nearest uh, curve point. Uh, so the more points we have to compare, the better. So for now, let's just use 200. Okay, so you can kind of tell that this is the letter A, almost. Um, but it's kind of composed out of a bunch of points. And the reason for that is if we look at the uh, curve, it's basically a point here, a point here, a point here. The lines don't exist. So what we need to do is you can either add more points or let's try something clever. Does edges work? Edges does work. If you didn't want to do this uh, for some reason, and there might be reasons uh, to do this, uh, you could keep it at points. And all you have to do is you have to resample the curve and add more points to it. This is equivalent. Um, although it takes more geometry. So I'm going to compare it to the edges 
Okay, so now we have an SDF for this. What does that mean? It means our grid, which is composed of a bunch of pixels. If you want to think about it like that, again, we can control the resolution. I'm going to make it a thousand by a thousand now. Um, it's going to output a material that says be black if you know, you're know you right on top of the text, if the distance is very close to zero, and otherwise on the interior and the exterior uh, be white or output the distance, which is going to be a positive number. So using this information, now we can create the effect. Here's how we're gonna do it. So we basically have a gradient going from zero to whatever distance. I'm going to multiply it to kind of make it higher contrast, as you can see. We're then gonna have it repeat with a fraction. So now fraction says, instead of going from zero to whatever, just go from zero to one, zero to one, keep it within the zero to one range. That's what fraction means. Keeps the, keep the fractional component. And you can think of this multiplication as kind of like a density of uh, this effect. And to have it not be this repeating 0 to 1 gradient now, I'm just going to say give it uh, anything greater than 0.5. Okay, which looks weird until we animate it. So I'm just going to offset it with an addition. And now we have this repeating uh, looking thing. We can control the thickness of these lines um, if you want to. And to get this to animate, I'm just going to put in a driver hash frame, the frame number divided by 100, which might be a bit slow. So divided by 30. And you can see uh, now we get this result. We can also get the inverse by changing the greater than. And you can see we have this uh, cool little SDF. I think technically if you use the points uh, version, it should give you something different because there's no orientation to the edge. So let's see. If I set this to points, you can already see we're getting something cool. Um, but now I resample it, set it to like 100 or whatever, and you can see, well, I guess it's it's the same, except it's a lower resolution. So maybe we should just keep it on edges. Uh, key insight here, the entire thing's procedural. What do I mean? I mean, change the text to the letter L, and boom, we have an SDF for the letter L. You want some fancy text to make some motion graphics things. Uh, it works with multiple uh, curves as well. So uh, that's the essence of it. What you want to do with it is up to you. I'll just give you one uh, quick option like I showed you, how to make it glow. I'm going to send it through an emission, give it the strength, give it a color. And since we're in EV, I'm going to enable bloom, make the background black, and make the strength larger and now we have a glowing repeat it's almost like a stranger things kind of effect i don't know uh, but either way that is how you make the sdf of of a, a piece of text and what i was saying about the whole curve thing by the way just so you know if we were to pick like a uh i don't know a circle curve circle primitive this should work although we don't need the realized instances. You can see it's gonna give us the same uh, kind of idea. Uh, let's make this a triangle. Uh, you can get a whole bunch of uh, different results out of this. Any curve, um, even a complicated one like a piece of text. Either way, I think we're done with this tutorial. We went for eight minutes. That means extra ads on the video, yeah. Um, okay. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Um, as you may or may not know, at the end of these, I always plug the ever living shit out of Patreon, but uh, you can click away if you don't care. Uh, but let me just give my pitch. So there's a link in the description uh, for this thing called Patreon. It is the best and the most direct way to support what I do here, making free tutorials on Default Cube and the uh, VFX results over on CG Matter. It is the most di direct way to donate, um, but you do get stuff in return. It's not just like a throw money into a void kind of thing. Three things you get in return for uh, being a patron, and there's 760 to 70 some that you see in the credits, thank you. Um, three things you get in return. One, you get the, uh, well, the lowest tier is you get the uh, tutorials early, so you could have watched this a day or multiple days early depending on the upload schedule. That's how you see comments before the video comes out. Uh, second thing, and that one's like, you know, whatever, it's still a free tutorial, but you get to see it early. Uh, second one is you get the blend files. So you don't have to make this yourself. You get the project file. And since I have made hundreds of tutorials and projects and stuff like that since 2019, you get access to all of those immediately. 
Um, so you could download any of those that you want to use them in your projects. And three, exclusive tutorials. Those are rare tutorials that I make that are paywalled. Um, they're just like random extra stuff. I try to keep most of the stuff available for free and it is possible to do so because of the generous patrons. So if you want to join, there's a link in the description. I'd greatly appreciate it, but you don't have to. I hope you learned something and that is it.